Have you ever felt like things just keep going wrong for you? Like the odds are stacked against you and that there's no hope? That's because you're on the wrong side of momentum. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can use momentum to your advantage to turn things around to win more in this game and in general in life. First, let me explain through a couple analogies before I explain this in relation to Conker's Blade. If you've ever been part of a team sport like American football or played a sport like tennis, you'll know this feeling well. The opponent has scored on you multiple times in a row, you keep missing shots, it feels like nothing is going your way and everything seems hopeless. If you don't play sports, just think about this in terms of your day-to-day -day life. Maybe someone you love just passed away right after you got laid off and you went through a really bad breakup all at the same time. It just feels like the world is against you, and whatever you do, you just can't seem to catch a break. This is just momentum that has built up in a negative direction against you. It feels like you're getting buried. So back to Conker's Blade, it's the same concept in this game. Let's say the enemy has just taken the first point and a massive blob of enemies is swarming towards you, and your team is full of EU players that only have ranged units. What are you gonna do? Do you give up and start trash talking all your teammates? Okay, I'll admit, I have done that myself a few times, but no. What we need to do is break the momentum. We need to do something that will turn the tides and revive hope that we can actually win. At a basic level, you have two options to break momentum. The first is a sudden drastic change in momentum that quickly flips things in your direction or at least moves things away from the negative direction. The second would be a gradual tipping back towards a neutral or positive momentum. So let's go over these two options and I'm gonna give an example of each of our three analogies. So one for sports, one for real life, and one for Conker's Blade. So our first option is to do something to cause a sudden change in momentum. For our sports analogy, let's use football as an example, as I used to play football and I'm pretty familiar with how this feels firsthand. In football, when your team gets a turnover, like a pick six or fumble recovery, those are moments in the game that immediately turn the momentum in your team's favor if it wasn't already, and give your teams and fans hope that things will turn around from here, or if things are already going well, it builds confidence that things will continue to go well. In our life example, maybe you start going to the gym a lot more after a bad breakup, or maybe you travel somewhere completely new after the death of a loved one, or maybe you start fasting to kick a bad eating habit. The point with all these is you're creating a distinguishable line in the sand where your behavior suddenly and drastically changes to something different than what it has been, in the hopes that things will start to improve. You've probably also seen this work in the opposite direction too. For example, if you already have money you can invest, you can take advantage of compounding interest to make even more money. Or if you run a business and you're able to sell a customer, they might help you in referring you to even more customers, so generally, success breeds even more success. It's kind of like a snowball rolling down a hill and getting bigger and bigger until something finally stops it. The Conqueror's Blade analogy of this would be when you're able to wipe out or completely halt a big blob of enemies very quickly. So think things like Golden Cab with flanking charges, Flamers, Sinji Bombs, Falconetti Gunners, and Divine Crow Artillery that can take out or halt a large compact group of enemy units in mass very quickly. The thing about sudden and drastic changes is they will work faster and they can sometimes be very good options, but you have to understand they're usually the riskier or more rare option to succeed. Just to give a couple quick examples of this, let's say you're playing football and maybe you're trying to force a fumble late in the game instead of making a tackle that you could have easily made. But in trying this, you actually end up giving up a touchdown. So now by risking this, the momentum is actually even farther against you. In life, maybe you want to do psychedelics instead of going to therapy to work through some issues you have. But maybe this one time you do it, you have an adverse reaction that actually makes your life significantly worse or harder than it was before. The same exact thing happens in Conqueror's Blade. Maybe you see an enemy blob coming and you think you can have your montage moment and run over all their units with your cab charge. But at the last moment, an IPG advance comes out of nowhere and wipes your whole cab unit without getting a single kill. Well now your team just lost a golden cab that you could have used in a later fight to turn things around with your team. But now your team is in an even worse position without your help in the next big team fight. So this isn't to say that decision was necessarily wrong in that moment. Maybe you had to slow down their advance to give your team time to regroup. It's just to point out you need to use option 1 when it makes sense or when you have no other option. And not just default to this option when it's convenient for you. So now you're probably wondering what you should do instead of option 1 then. Your alternative is option 2, which is to do something or a series of actions that will gradually tip momentum back in your favor. This would generally be seen as a less risky option and it gives you more time. Although depending on the scenario, there can be cases where a sudden drastic change is the only option if something is time sensitive. Going back to our sports analogy, probably the most common and basic example of this is taking a timeout. 
This gives your team some breathing room and time to regroup, while it can also settle down the other team and fan base if there's a lot of built up excitement after a big play. Another example in football could just be a long grinding possession down the field where you go 90 yards for a touchdown without any big plays, just a series of small yardage gains along the way. The two good things about this is both the breathing room it gives your team and it also refocuses your team on focusing on the basic mechanics of winning by driving the ball down the field versus a more emotional feeling like they need to force some big plays that might not be there. In our real life analogy, a very common example of this is let's say that you're overweight. There's a saying that you need to get better the same way that you got sick. Meaning, if you haven't been working out or eating good for multiple years, it might take that same amount of time now that you are working out and eating right to get back to where you want to be. So it's not easy, but it is possible and it is a lot of work, which is not something a lot of people want to do. So that's why you see things like the rise of Ozempic, even though we've yet to see all the long-term negative side effects that drugs like that can have on you. Back to our gaming example for Conqueror's Blade, this could be something like regrouping your whole team on home point instead of continually dying off one by one after you started losing a big push. You could also bait the enemies into overextending while slowly picking off their units until all of a sudden most of their units are dead and you're able to pick off a couple heroes. Maybe another hero jumps in to help them and they die also and next thing you know their entire team is in retreat and you're getting a few extra kills as you counterattack. So generally, you would want to pick option 2 of a more gradual change as it is less risky. And another good thing about it, at least in our sport and gaming analogies, is it is hard to counter by your opponent as they won't always see when it's happening. So just as a quick example of that, if your opponents are smart when they have the momentum, they can expect something like a cavalry flanking charge and be prepared for that. Whereas if you just regroup and have your whole team fight against them instead, they will have to re-strategize to win an entirely new balanced team fight, which gives you much better odds than the alternative in this case. Just to recap the concepts I went over, you essentially have two options when you want to change the momentum in your favor. Option one is a sudden and drastic change that is generally more risky, but can very quickly turn things around. This is usually appropriate when something is very time sensitive. Option two is a more gradual series of actions that slowly tips things back in your favor, which is appropriate when you have plenty of time and want to go with the option that is likely to lead to better sustained results in the long term. Hopefully now that you understand the importance of momentum, you'll be able to recognize when things feel like they're stacking up against you and the options you have to turn things around. If you made it all the way to the end, thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and leave a comment down below with how you're going to use momentum to your advantage.